today with <laughs> Man, I'm so sorry. You got it. You got it. Today we're talking about Polly Murray and her many lives, her many hats. I'm Junie. I'm Kingetta. Hi, I'm Rai. Yeah. This is and this is drunk LGBT history. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> There we go. One thing to note is that um, in present times, a lot of biographers and people who have looked at Polly Murray's life considered that she may have identified as a man or as a lesbian, um, but she also did not have words to describe those things. And in her own autobiography, she used she, her pronouns to describe herself and her biographers have followed that lead and I will be as well in this video. So, Polly Murray goes to college and like has to struggle a bit. Like she can't afford college, so she has to work all these jobs and like when she graduates the job market is it sucks. And she is a worker and she's a strong proponent of workers rights because like her whole life she had to fight nigga <laughs> like that's what she said and like these people like are hearing her and this is like before the civil rights movement and she like gets bust down before Rosa Parks this is in the 1940s she and her friend are on this bus from New York um to Richmond, Virginia, and they get asked to go to the back, even though the back is already full, and they had to sit at the front because the back was full, and they're like, no, and this is 1940s, Rosa Parks wasn't even thought of, just kidding, she was alive, I'm sorry, queen, but people after that are asking to hear her voice as a worker, as, as an activist. One of the people that hear her voice is a Howard professor, w along with Thurgood Marshall, who writes her, who both write her the recommendation to get into Howard University, an all-black institution for black people. Except she gets there, and Howard is an institution of all black people, so she don't have to worry about like not getting in because of her race, which she had to before. One of her struggles was as a student. Now she has to think about her first day of class, how her law professor is like, I don't know why a woman would be here. She's the only woman. So she has to like fight all her life, but like in a different way. Like now she's like the only woman and she's like embarrassed by this law professor. And now she's like, wow. Now I gotta prove to all these niggas that I'm the best. And she did. She graduated at the top of her class. All these kids, they're all like, these are black people arguing against Plessy versus Ferguson. And they're like, ugh, what do we argue? Like, uh, how do we beat this? And she comes in there and she's like, uh, they're not equal. Talking about writing a paper about the 13th and 14th Amendment. And she wrote this 30 page paper where she was like, the 13th and 14th Amendment, like, show the separate but equal is unconstitutional. And her law professor, years and years later, at the table in the room, that included Thurgood Marshall that was deciding Brown v. Board of Education brought out this paper and was like, hey, my student wrote this paper. Let me bring, let me bring this and be a key to the success of Brown v. Board of Education because of her ideas. And they all were like, yeah. Thanks for this paper. And she did not find out until she was like in her mid 50s. This person is one of the most prolific, like legal writers, activists, 
of all time like at the time that she found out about this she was already a priest like this throughout her life wore so many hats <sighs> and it's just a shame that all the things that she lived through that she did were not talked about like at least we're here now at least we're talking about her now at least we're knowing her story now she did a lot for us 